about the signs and symptoms we are going to talk about the signs and symptoms so uh, in, in my introduction I've talked about uh, various uh, signs and symptoms for uh, schizophrenia I talked about the positive uh, symptoms the negative symptoms um, and I talked about the cognitive uh, functions uh, signs and symptoms so these symptoms can can be categorized like I've said and I'm going to give overview over the same to repeat on what I said on my introduction so on the positive symptoms we have hallucinations as one of the positive uh, positive uh, <coughs> symptom so false perception of sensory when that's what we mean by hallucinations experiences that are not based on the reality the most common type of, of, uh, of, of this is auditory hallucinations where one hears some voices, visual, also they can see things which are not in the real life, olfactory, they can also hear, uh, hear things which are not, are not, uh, are not, uh, are not uh, really in the real life, tactile and also gustatory hallucinations may also occur. Also, on the positive uh, symptoms, we have delusions, where false beliefs that are not based on reality are uh, the resistance to evidence of the logical reasoning. Delusion can take various forms, such as paranoid delusion, or e.g. believing one is being persecuted or conspired against. Also, or grandiose delusion, believing one is as, uh, where one believes has special powers or ability. One can tell you, I'm the president of this country. I'm associated with the, the deputy president of this country. I'm the prime minister of the world. So such kind of, uh, what, that's what we call grandiose uh, delusions. Also, uh, on the positive part of it, we have disorganized thinking, where we have impaired thought processes characterized by the logical, fragmented, or incoherent speech, and difficulty, of, uh, difficulty organizing thoughts or expressing, expressing the uh, ideas coherently. So speech may be, uh, tangential, uh, they also may be relevant or circumstantial, and the conversations may be very difficult uh, to follow. So, so that, those are the examples of the positive symptoms. On the negative symptoms, we have flat affect, that's number one, where one is reduced emotional expressions or a blunted affect, characterized by the lack of uh, facial expressions, vocal inflections, or uh, gestures. Individual may, be, may appear emotionally detached or unresponsive, so that is what you call a flat affect. We also have a volition in the negative symptoms, where one is, uh, has reduced motivation, in, uh, initiative, and goal-directed behavior. So individual may have difficulty initiating and sustaining activities, completing tasks, or pursuing personal or occupational uh, goals. So that's, an, that's what you call a volition. And also on the negative symptom, we have also social withdrawal. Withdrawal from social interactions, where one withdraws and uh, relationships, leading to the social isolation, loneliness, and decreased engagement in the social activity, guys. And uh, number, number three on the negative uh, symptoms, like I've mentioned the flat effect as number one, I've mentioned the volition, I've mentioned social withdrawal and also number four I've mentioned I will mention about the negative symptom is about what you call anhedonia. Anhedonia is reduced the ability to experience pleasure or enjoyment in the activities that were previously rewarding or pleasurable. You get somebody who was enjoying maybe watching TV or listening to music but he has developed uh, is now has a very negative perception over the same that's what you call anhedonia and that these individuals may lose interest in hobbies, socializing, or other activities they once enjoyed. That's called in psychiatry, it's called anhedonia. So that in, in short, that is that what comes up with the, the negative symptom. On the number three, cognitive symptoms, we have impaired memory. We have difficulty with memory encoding, retention, and retrieval. Individuals may have trouble remembering the recent events, learning new information, or recalling the past experiences. Number two is about impaired attention, where difficulty in focusing, sustaining attention, or shifting attention between tasks or stimuli. Individual may be easily distracted or have trouble maintaining uh, concentration at that particular point. Number, number four is about impaired, uh, on, on the cognitive symptoms, I've talked about impaired memory, 
impaired attention and uh, number three is about impaired executive uh, to execute functions so deficits uh, in higher or order cognitive processes such as planning problem solving decision making and abstract thinking may be a big challenge with this kind of uh, individuals so individuals may have difficulty in organizing thoughts setting goals or adapting to changes in the in the environment in addition to these uh, symptoms are mentioned individuals with schizophrenia may experience more disturbances such as depression anxiety disruption in sleep appetite and uh, energy levels this severe and the combination of symptoms can vary over time with the periods of exacerbation that's we have psychotic episodes followed by uh, periods of uh, remission so early detection and intervention are critical for managing symptoms and improving the outcomes of uh, individual with the schizophrenia so treatment typically involves combination of psychotic medication psych psychosocial intervention and support uh, tailor support services tailored to the individual uh, uh, individual needs and this can also be can be done very well when one gets to the healthcare provider especially your psychi psychiatrist to evaluate you well or the uh, psychiatry healthcare provider to really help you at that particular point on management how do we manage how do, how do how can how best can we manage uh, this uh, schizophrenia thing so management we have various uh, comprehensive and multidisciplinary approach aimed at reducing the symptoms as appropriate so preventing so that we prevent the relapse of the symptoms and also promote recovery and improving the quality of life for individuals affected by the disorder because this schizophrenia thing most of the time guys is a long term is is a life is, a, is something which you live with in your life so it's good you know how to manage the symptoms prevent relapse where you get extreme uh, symptoms which can affect you in a very bad way so here are the key components of management for schizophrenia and when we talk about management number one is about medication uh, medication management that's number one approach which is used and here we use the antipsychotic drug medications when we use antipsychotic medications are the cornerstone or treatment for schizophrenia they help to alleviate the positive symptoms such as hallucination and delusion and prevent relapse and there are two main uh, classes of antipsychotic medications well, what, what we call typical and atypical and for typical we have first generation and also uh, for atypical we have second generation antipsychotics for atypical antipsychotics are often preferred to their reduced risk of extra, extra pyramidal uh, side effects so most of the management for schizophrenia we use are typical antipsychotics because they don't have some a lot of extra pyramidal uh, side effects which can affect uh, the patients number two is about adherence monitoring that's part of the management for for the patient where adherence monitoring ensure that the, uh, this uh, ensuring that the the patient adheres to medications uh, for maintaining symptom control and preventing the relapse so like here in africa like here in kenya the patient is put on monthly follow-up and also is put on a daily dose of the antipsychotics to help alleviate the symptoms and uh, help the patient carry on uh, regular uh, life and the adherence is a key component where strategies, strategies like uh, uh, medication education regular follow-up appointments and a long-acting injectable formulation where you we use depot injection where you are maybe you get one injection per month to improve uh, adherence number two is about uh, number number three is about number two is about psychosocial interventions individual therapy cognitive behavior therapy or what we call cbt and other evidence-based uh, therapies can help with the schizophrenia manage to manage the symptoms improve coping the skills uh, coping skills and address challenges such as delusion hallucinations and uh, social function also on the same psychosocial interventions we have family therapy where involving the family members in therapy can be provide support education and communication skills training to improve family relationship and enhance uh, treatment adherence also on uh, this on the same uh, on the same psychosocial interventions we have uh, social skills training 
where social skills training programs help individuals with schizophrenia to develop and practice the personal skills, communication skills, problem solving skills, assertiveness leading to improve, improved social functioning and also community integration. Also uh, on the same we have vocational rehabilitation which can be done at the particular point as a form of management. Vocational rehabilitation program assists individuals with schizophrenia in obtaining and maintaining employment, vocational training and job skills development, promoting independence and also financial stability because we want to make these guys as independent uh, as possible. Number three, we have supportive services. Uh, so I talked. I have talked about uh, 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 number one. I talked about medication. Number two, I've talked about psychosocial interventions. And if you have not really understood, because these things are deep, you can uh, you can return to the video. You can uh, you can rewind the video and also watch on the same. I've said, I've talked about the drug intervention. I've talked about psychosocial interventions and also supportive services. Very important where case managers coordinate, uh, provide support and also connect individuals with schizophrenia, uh, community resources, or health services, housing assistance and financial assistance as a support uh, service. So peer support is also very important. Peer support groups are peer-led programs where individuals and schizophrenia uh, individuals come together to connect with each other share experiences, provide mutual support, and share coping uh, strategies and uh, resources at that particular point. Education and also number four, education and psychoeducation is very important, where educa education is number one. Providing education about schizophrenia, it is, uh, its symptoms, treatment options, and prognosis help individuals and their families uh, to understand the disorder and make uh, informed decisions about uh, about treatment and also about uh, self-care because we want to make these individuals as independent as possible. Psycho, psycho education is also an, another thing which is very important on the education part of it. Psycho education programs over structures educa structured education and skill training for individuals with schizophrenia and their families covering the topics such as uh, medical management, medication management, Symptom, symptom recognition, where family is taught on how to, or the individual is, uh, is uh, taught on how, on how to identify if the symptoms are, are coming up, coping skills, relapse prevention, and also crisis management when these things happen. Number five is about comprehensive care coordination. So, integrate, number one, when we talk about comprehensive care coordination, is about integrated care, where we have coordinated care between mental health providers primary care providers, specialists, and other health professionals ensure to ensure comprehensive assessment, treatment, management of, of both the mental and the physical health uh, needs for these uh, individuals. Number two is about the continuity of care, where continuity of care is essential for ongoing symptom monitoring, medical management, or medication management, support, and also follow-up to promote the long-term stability, guys and also recovery at the end of the day. Overall, the management of schizophrenia requires holistic and individualized uh, approach. This is where we have uh, uh, the healthcare providers coming in, we have the family coming in, and also the individual who is being assisted also coming in. So, to, so that we can address the complex needs of individuals with the disorder, with focus on uh, symptom control, functional recovery, social interaction and also give that person uh, quality of life. Collaboration between individuals with schizophrenia, their families, healthcare providers and community support services is essential for achieving uh, optimal outcomes and uh, to promote, uh, to promote a, a recovery and also give the comfort for those, for those who are affected by this uh, condition. When we talk about the prevention of uh, Schizophrenia is also a, a very important thing which we must talk about. So preventing a schizophrenia is a challenging, is challenging and a com, uh, and a really complex, and it, because it is multifactorial nature, but there are some strategies that may help the risk uh, to risk uh, mitigate uh, its impact. However, 
It's important to note that these approaches are not guaranteed to prevent development of schizophrenia. But here, are the, I'm going to give you some of the prevention strategies which you can employ uh, to prevent schizophrenia. Number one, we talk about early intervention. It is very important. Early intervention and uh, detection can help individuals at risk of developing uh, schizophrenia and provide timely treatment and support. So early signs of psychosis, such as change in behavior, uh, social withdrawal, decline in academic or occupational functioning should be promptly addressed through comprehensive assessment and appropriate uh, interventions. Number two is about uh, prenatal care. So where we ensuring access to quality prenatal care help promote maternal and fetal health and reduce the risk of complications uh, during pregnancy and childbirth, where, which may, that may increase the risk of schizophrenia. This includes uh, uh,